when we started this year, we didn't like never in our wildest imagination did we think we we're going to be where we are right now. Wow. Because mm. of uh, COVID, because the borders were closed, so we couldn't see further ahead. Yeah. So we were still like trying to run our other events like our sunday events and our like our, our the night shift events we do at metro city and then we did the, on the night of the first show because while we were backstage i looked at the crowd i looked at all the levels of metro city and i'm like this is a dream yeah like to me that I, that just felt so good and seeing people jumping and having fun just made me feel like we're here, bro. Let's go. I love that. I love that. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have Afrobeats Fusion in the studio today. A couple of lads who have made it in the Afrobeats scene. Not going to lie, it's something that I haven't uh, embraced myself in yet. Um, there's been a couple of times where I've heard it and it's a vibe, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm still yet to be in, in, the, uh, sort of in the club where everyone's vibing. Vibing's so, sweet. so I've, I've listened to it and mm. it's, and it's something that I'm just like, all right, cool. Something that isn't just throw away rap music. Yes. <laughs> yes. So tell me about yourselves. Um, who so, are you and, uh, how did you get to know each other? I'll let him start. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is Yemi, uh, one of the co-founders of, um, Afrobeat Fusion. Um, we started in 2019. Uh, I sent a message to my friend here, Shola, asking if he's interested in doing um, a promotion for Afrobeat artists. And he's like, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Nice. And basically everything started from basically a text. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, a WhatsApp message. It was <laughs> I think, a WhatsApp. I, I think you posted a, a photo of that text a while ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was on his way uh, to vacation in Europe. Yeah. So he was actually in Dubai when he got the message. And then he was like, let's do it. Let's and do it. Boom. <laughs> okay. That's it. And what, what made you go, yeah, let's do it? Um, interestingly, I'd, I'd always been interested in Afrobeats. I just didn't know, like in, you know, bringing artists and doing things. I just didn't know how to do it. I didn't know, I didn't know where to start from. So when he sent me that message, I'm like, damn it, that's what I need. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Like I didn't even, I, I think if you check the times, I replied immediately saying, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I've always been was he like you were straight away. I was like, "Woo, okay." Yeah. <laughs> you up? You yeah. up? What you doing? Yeah. In fact, I think I also wrote that. Like, oh my god, I've been thinking of this for a while. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then, cool. And then boom. So, so what is it exactly for anybody that doesn't know? Um, do you want me to? Yeah, you go with that one. All right, cool. Um, so uh, the name itself, um, Afrobeat, obviously from the genre Afrobeat music, uh, uh, which I would say is actually part of our roots coming from Nigeria is something we literally grew up listening to. Uh, and then coming to Australia, we just thought that the genre needs a bit more audience than it has at the moment. Um, over in the UK and America, it's already a household name. Like when you say Afrobeats, everybody just knows what you're talking about. But in Australia, it's, it's, it's starting to pick up. And then the fusion just means that we are gonna we are doing Afrobeats and other genres. So we are fusing other genres with Afrobeats. That's, that's and, and and how did that come about? We just <laughs> thought about it and then actually it was supposed to be the name was supposed to be Afro Aussie Inc. And when we tried to register that, we found out that we couldn't because it was already existing. Mm. And we're just like, well, since we're going to be promoting Afrobeat, why don't we just go with Afrobeat Fusion? And then, <laughs> boom. And we, no, also no. Kind of, we kind of think Afrobeat somehow is like flows into everything at the moment. Yeah. Right? yeah. Anyway, so, so there's a fusion anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. It's kind of like oh, that's a better name. No, like, no hate to Australia, the name Australia, but Afrobeat <laughs> Fusion <laughs> yeah. sounds more universal and it sounds like yeah. you can take it over, overseas as well. Exactly. So um, in terms of how it came about and in terms of now where it's at, mm. um, what um, – over east, uh, overseas. Let's start with that. Mm. Do you? W when did it first go? Okay, this is the thing. Obviously, from the Nigerian culture, mm. but now it's on the main scene. Is there like a like a person that just brought it out, like made it, like this is a thing now? Do you remember? Do you know? I think it, it was. I think the band was the first artist that went international. Uh, but the, I think it was Two Face when. Um, 
he his song African Queen was featured in that Monique's Monique's comedy uh, that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then um yeah after that we started having people exporting the song to the UK promo. Actually, I would in my own opinion, the UK actually made Afrobeat a global phenomenon. Because mm-hmm. even back in Nigeria, back in the early 2000s, we didn't used to listen to Afrobeat songs. Yeah. We used to listen to hip hop and dancehall yeah, yeah, and reggaeton. We used to call it Nigerian music. Yeah, so when Afrobeat started, when all these guys started popping up, we used to actually call it Nigerian music and then it became Ninja Jams and it became Ninja, Ninja Hip Hop. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, because uh, most of it back then was just hip hop people rapping and yeah. with a local dialect to the pidgin English. And then I think from 2005, 2003, thereabout, was when it actually started really becoming the, the rest of the world started listening. When we had the likes of the band P Square mm. doing collabs with people like Akon, people like um, Mary J. Blige, and all of that. And then all of a sudden, from 2010, it just became something yeah. that everyone just had to listen to. And now Australia is embracing it. Yes. Gradually. Who has <coughs> been the front runner so far in Australia for this? Wow. Mm. I think in Australia, it's been everything has it's been on the promoter level, to be yeah. honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, in different states, we have promoters who are just pushing this by way of playing it at their own nightclubs mm-hmm. and bringing like one artist or the other. Uh, but since, I think since the pandemic, since the borders open, it's become more a thing where Australia is now where everyone just wants to come to. Um, I wouldn't say that was our making, to be honest with you, mm. <laughs> because I mean, there've been, there've been people who have been playing in that space, but I would say that we actually gave it more visibility. That's cool. I think yeah. it's all, there's also a collaborative effort with uh, you have people who teach Afrobeat dancing. Yeah, and that's there's a, that's huge there. And there's a I need to get onto that. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely to, need to get onto that. To, uh, I'll so, give you a playlist after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, um, there's there's that, and then there are people who like there's um, all the TikToks and all the other. Th- but anyway, dancing in itself was driven as actually been you know, also a huge driving force mm. for Afrobeats, especially yeah. in Australia. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Oh, we guess you could say you're the front runners now. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not yet. Really but, 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 no. but that's that, that's the goal. That's the yeah. goal. But yeah. Not so, yet. what were you doing before this? Do you want to go first? <laughs> um, what were we doing? Uh, so, look, I have. We both have a like a, a day job where we do eight to five and stuff. Yeah. Um, I I'm in IT. I work in projects, so that's my uh, eight to five stuff that I do. Um, but I also find that that um, knowledge is transferable into Afrobeats because cause I deal with a lot of projects, project management. So anytime we have any project coming up, like bringing an artist, it's a project that we can kind of sit together and can kind of design so I can use that knowledge to help out the, like, the company. Um, I'll let you tell him, he'll tell you about what he does. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I'm more, <laughs> sometimes when people ask me what I do, I don't even know where to start because I do so much. Um, so I moved to Australia 10 years ago. Uh, uh, I'm a vet by training, veterinary doctor. Um, so I got here, I just didn't really feel interested in practicing vet anymore. And then I started doing so many things. I've done door-to-door sales, like uh, I've done face-to-face, I did face-to-face marketing for seven years. So I think that's basically what got me really um, exposed to the Australian culture. And then um, I run a mobile car detailing business as well on the side. And then right now, Afrobeat is, just seems to be the thing that is taking all my time. Love so, that. Yeah. And, you, and you obviously love it. Uh, Absolutely love it. Love it. Absolutely. Like so, it's, so that's with, why he's in charge of all our marketing. <laughs> because he knows that stuff. Yeah. That. So when it comes to the Afrobeats itself, what do you guys actually do to, to uh, deliver that? What is it? So, like, like you play the music? Yep. And so, then you teach the music to others? So what we do, um, like where we, where we, I would say we contribute more is um, by making sure that, uh, first of all, most of the artists we bring to Australia are Afrobeat artists. Mm. Uh, we run events where it's, I would say, it's 90, 80 to 90% Afrobeat music being yeah. played. Yeah. 
Uh, and then um, we just want to see ourselves as people who, like, once you think of Afrobeat, you think about us. That's so, the goal. That's that the goal. is the goal. Mm. Cool. And how are you found? Uh, how are you finding marketing that on socials? It's actually very easy now. <laughs> It's very easy now um, with the, because TikTok have ju- has just made um, the genre itself very global. So, and these Afrobeat songs go viral so quickly. Mm. So it's very, very easy for you to catch on to. So as soon as you catch on to a song, you want to know what are the songs that particular artist has released. Yeah. And then it's, it's like a, it's like a rabbit hole. You just start going down, <laughs> down and down. And then before you know it, you, and then we have st- Superstars now like Burner Boy, uh, Whiskey, Davido, who are playing the game on a bigger scale in the world as well. So that's awesome. Mm. That's awesome. I'm uh, as a TikTok person. I'm I'm not really pushing any trending songs on mm. my channel. Mm. There's actually a wave of copyright infringements okay. coming along. Yeah, where like Jack Harlow's First Class, for example. Yeah, that was on for a minute. That you can use a minute clip. Yeah. And they've cut it back down to 30 seconds. Wow. So all the videos that had that track that was went over 30 seconds, they were all muted. And wow. I'm just like, what's going on? You know, that's not helpful. But uh, with 30 seconds, I mean, you could do a dance yeah. in 15 seconds, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. And I imagine that's probably a good way to do it. Absolutely. But um, if I was a young and up-and-coming Afrobeats uh, composer, mm. what's what's your biggest tip for me? How do I get into the game? Just listen to as many Afrobeat songs as possible. Um, the good thing about the current period we're in right now is that it's actually very easy to learn because everything is in your face. Gone are the days when you actually need to go and search, but right now you don't need to do any more any like searching per se. You've got like a lot of songs out there that actually go viral. You just need to pick which is your style and which is not, and then just basically copy and paste. That's the way I see it. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. And uh, any upcoming Australian Afrobeats people that you're kind of recognizing and, and onboarding to these events? How, what's your process with that? He, he does the <laughs> supporting arts recruitment. <laughs> so, so. Um, Anytime we, anytime we're bringing an Afrobeat artist, we, we also try, we, we make sure we have a local talent mm. that we try to, we promote with that show, mm. um, just to give them um, a wider audience, because we, we get a crowd of um, a thousand and upwards at our events. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So uh, the last one we brought, Rema, we was almost a sold out event at Metro City. We filled up all the three levels. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And wow. the next one who's coming on the 27th of October is actually a big artist. Uh, his song, you mentioned Jack Harlow. Yeah. His song, Booga, was competing with Jack Harlow's song for the most Shazam song in the world for a while. Wow. Wow. For like five yeah. weeks. Wow. For like five weeks. Yeah. So, so what goes into um, promoting or setting up promoting and executing a successful night at Metro City? A lot, <laughs> a lot, because <laughs> because he does the pr- project management side, so I'll, I'll let him I'll let him handle that. A lot. So you um, basically think of the venue. There's a lot that goes into the venue, production, the sound, uh, special effects. Um, then you think of the artist, the artist hospitality, which is a completely different ballgame entirely. Um, then you think of security. Um, there's so much to get done and then everything always goes wrong every time so you, if, you, oh. if you have an event on Friday that Friday everything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong so you have to be always on your you know on your game problem solving to your ears. I remember like the last one we sat the whole of Friday the last one we had we sat at you know at um, Crown and were just killing fires throughout oh. and I said to him when I'm like dude I'm like I'm getting a high on from, from this stuff and it's like, me too. <laughs> that you enjoy that? Yeah, yeah. How good is it? I enjoy yeah. that stuff. I don't yes. here, but there's a lot that goes, there's a lot of back on, um, back, um, background process that goes into it. Um, he does a lot of the artists, like the uh, supporting arts recruitment and all those that. And even that also, there's, we have a few requirements that you need to kind of need to meet to be able to be a supporting art on our, like, you know, on any of our shows. Okay. Um, because we just don't want to just have what are they? anybody there. Um, so 
um, <laughs> we there's, there's a few things we look at. We look um, at the song itself, if it's um, Afrobeat in nature, because I mean, anyone can just um, say their song is Afrobeat. But there, there's a few things we look out for, like the, the rhythm, yeah. um, the sound itself, and uh, the acceptability. Um, we have a guy, am I, can I mention names? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got a, um, a guy, a very talented guy coming out of Perth right now. His name is Bless. Um, he did an Afrobeat song called Loco. And straight away, that song got onto the spot and um, the Afro Suari playlist in Australia on Spotify. Cool. Over a, um, a hundred thousand streams on that song. Wow. And he's a Perth boy, man. Wow, that's yeah. the game, isn't it, these yeah. days? You've you got to get on a playlist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if SoundCloud is as relevant. Yeah, SoundCloud is really relevant yeah. for the DJs as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for people like that, we just we try to make sure that we we just give them just a wider coverage. Mm. Um, yeah, just so, like, Afrobeat is a worldwide phenomenon now. So it doesn't matter where you are. You can create it from anywhere. Yeah. So so we, we try to help people like that uh, with a wider coverage. And then even talking about the DJs as well, um, we are more interested in up and coming DJs because um, the market, DJ market is very saturated. Yeah. Very, very saturated. So, but when we see a young DJ who's got a talent and really wants to go for that, we try to make sure that we get them on our events as well. That's awesome. Mm. Okay. So if I was to compose my first Afrobeat song, where do I start? How do I, how do I go about it? <laughs> get to a studio. <laughs> Um, when it comes to song composition, to be honest, I I don't I can't read. It's not my expertise, so I yeah. can't really say much about that. Okay. But I I'm guessing like like I said earlier, it's, this process is a lot easier these days. There there are producers left, right, and center. Yeah, yeah. Even in Perth, here, we've got local producers that can help. Yeah, mm. I'm just trying to figure out what constitutes a banger, a banger Afrobeats a, a tune, you know. And like I, I'm 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 into it because I I've heard it all on TikTok yeah. and I'm like yeah this is a vibe yeah this is a vibe and then I'm like because I've got like I want to get into sound eventually mm. uh, you know podcasting I guess counts but mm. music producing sounds really cool mm. you know like the story of Dr Dre oh, always I know always I know. like my favorite story. And then how he and Eminem like yeah, collaborated DJ, that first from time. From DJ into becoming a producer. It's so good. Yeah. So good. So going back to the Metro Metro City events, mm. um, what has been your mem most memorable night? For me, I think maybe we, have my, we might have different um, nights. For me, I think it was um, it was our first event. After how long ago a, was that? That was in um, April. Wow. When, when after they opened the borders. Because... When we started this year, we didn't, like, never in our wildest imagination did we think we we're going to be where we are right now. Wow. Because mm. of uh, COVID, because the borders were closed, so we couldn't see further ahead. Yeah. So we were still, like, trying to run our other events, like our Sunday events and our, like, our, our, the night shift events we do at Metro City. And then we did, the, on the night of the first show, because while we were backstage, I looked at the crowd... I looked at all the levels of Metro City and I'm like, this is a dream. Yeah. Like, to me, that, I, that just felt so good. And seeing people jumping and having fun just made me feel like, we're here, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's amazing. So how many months has it been? Less than six months. That's crazy. It is. By the way, if you're listening and you can hear the tapping and stuff, there's very heavy rain outside. So, uh, yeah, apologies for that if it comes through. I don't even know. Uh, we don't wear headphones on the show. We like to keep our hair nice and cool. Yep. But going back to this, uh, this hustle in the last six months, um, what's next? Um, obviously, we have uh, our next artist coming in October, but next year is going to be a, a very busy year. So we've been busy this year, but next year is going to be a lot busier. The things that we have not ever done before, that we will do next year. Um, particularly in March, so I'll tell people to keep, you know, keep an eye out in March. <laughs> there's uh, something happening. Yeah. Um, we haven't announced yet, but we will eventually. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there are a few things we have planned up for um, next year that is, um, they're going to be big, they're going to be different. Um, it's very exciting. Sometimes when I think of it, I'm a little bit nervous, but 
that's uh, that this, this this that's been the entire year anyway. It, yeah. Usually when he comes, I'm like, let's do this. I'm like, mm, because it, so in the group, he's um, the one that just goes, ah, oh, we have twenty percent, let's go. I'm like, but let's have ninety nine point two percent. So we go. <laughs> he's like, no, we go, we, we go. And so you know, usually it drags me kicking and screaming. I'm like, fine, let's just do it anyway. But it's all on you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's what interesting though. We've never like you know, it's always been we've just thrown our seven to it. Um, you asked uh, what our the, like the biggest um, what's it called about the um, biggest event or biggest uh, thing that stood out for us is for me same thing was the Omani event the one we had and the reason being when we announced it we were on lockdown I think yeah it was, there uh, was like limited capacity yeah and borders were still <laughs> was borders there? were still closed yeah when we announced the show so borders were still closed I remind I remember talking <laughs> with my younger brother and he's like. Um, okay, this is interesting. Like, how are you going to do this? I'm like, honestly, we're just going to throw us at, at, at it as if everything is going to work out fine. Yeah. Like, we have uh, no choice now. We're already in it now. Yeah. So let's just do it. We had spent the money already. Yeah. Let's go. Like, And like he said, that day when I stood behind the stage, like, you know, on, on the, um, like, uh, behind, on backstage and I looked at the crowd and I saw people dancing, singing along with O'Malley and stuff. And I was like, wow. You did that. Yeah. Oh my God. What wow. a feeling. Yeah. I, mean, I think I almost have tapped black Yeah, like, like <laughs> this, this is, is us. us. Like, like, yeah, man. <laughs> you know. That's incredible. <laughs> I definitely want to feel that vibe. That's nothing. Uh, you can't put a price on that. that you, nah. Money can't buy that experience. Mm, not at all. You know, your your vision and your your hustle and your drive to make it happen and believe it. Mm. And, and when it comes off, Oh, it's the best feeling, eh? I know it's uh, it's amazing. Like there's this just I don't know how to describe it. It's just you just feel so good. Like yeah, it gets happening. addictive. Mm. So now that it's growing, mm. um, how are your full time jobs going? Are you are you thinking about eventually kicking the bucket and going to going to do this all in? I'll tell you something funny, eh? We send messages to each other. Like anytime I send a message to him, 2 a.m., any time of the day, <laughs> yeah. he responds. Relax. Yep. He does something to me, I respond. Yeah. So long story short is that even though we have eight to five, like eight to five jobs, moment we're done, we get home, we start on Afrobeat. Oh, even during the day, like he's at work um, and I see something on Instagram, I send it to my brother, bro, what do you think about it? Oh, cool, let's do it. Or uh, like I just remember we like for us with Afrobeat Fusion, there's actually no break. It's actually full time for us right yeah. now. Oh yeah. Like in the middle of the night, yeah. like um, if I if I if I think of anything like at one a.m. Uh, hey bro, this is what's what I something that you cut, like think about at one a.m. <laughs> Um, am I allowed to open my phone? Do you want, can I open my phone? Yeah, yeah. Go for it's it. It's my phone actually. Um, sorry, it's over there. Anyway, that's right. On, I'll get it. On no, on go. on Sat was it Saturday or Friday night? Just that's, that's my jacket over there. Just oh, yeah. the big one. Sorry? Yeah, the big one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Saturday night. So on Saturday night, I. So this is how I always start. I just sent him. I just sent him a message, bro. I have an idea, and he <laughs> goes. I remember that. And he goes, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that. how it always starts. Yeah, so that. so like on on Saturday around this was actually very. <laughs> We send so many messages. It's, fun, it's, like, so it's crazy. Crazy. Sometimes my wife goes, um, what's going on? Like, she goes through my call log and it's just him, him, yeah. him, him. I'm like, she goes through your call like, log. When she sees that, she goes, what's going on? <laughs> I'm like, that's Afro beats for you. <laughs> she was a bit suspicious at the start. Now I'm just like, you gotta. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, I, 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 I thought about an idea and then. Um, I just I just sent it to him like at one a.m. and he's like, yeah, I'm listening. And then uh, yeah, I just told him what it was, and then straight away we fixed the meeting for the next day. Uh, we saw each other the next day and hashed it out, and then yeah, that's amazing. That idea of he does that as well. Like he sees something very interesting at. 4 a.m. in the morning, and he sends it's it like to me. He's you. <laughs> just like on the internet, just <laughs> yeah, scrolling, yeah, just scrolling. And I think <laughs> because we all we so into the the like Afrobeat fusion, like the whole thing. So anything you see, you can kind of relate it back to Afrobeat fusion, and you're like, oh my god, this is yeah. Great. yeah. Have That's there been any ideas that have already happened that you can talk about? 
So even even the the, the Omale event, mm. it was someone that sent me the around 9 p.m. Someone sent me the the flyer and goes, um, "Is this really happening?" And I was like, um, "I don't know." And then straight away, I sent. <laughs> I'll actually open the message here right now. <laughs> 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 I'll open the message right now. So straight away, I just sent that screenshot to him. Because when they announced the event, because uh, we use an agency um, in the East, uh, Prince Entertainment. So when they announced the event, they, there was no date for Perth yet. So one of my DJs saw that flyer and then DMs me the flyer and just to find out if this is really happening. And I was like, uh, yeah, cool. And then and I was like, I don't know. I'll find out. And straight away, I just sent the flyer to him. I was like, bro, what do you think about this? O'Malley is actually coming to Australia. We had no money in our bank account. No dime in our bank account. When I sent him the flyer and he's like, let's do it. So how did you... How did you secure him with no money in the bank account? <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? We, um, <clears throat> so we have a, a few sponsors that help us out. Honestly, we also have very, we also both have very good jobs, like um, very good incomes anyway. So yeah. um, we guarantee sometimes if we need a huge chunk of money and we cannot immediately get it from our sides, they people who work with us are like family members and brothers and people who we know. So we guarantee, they, they know that we, we're good for it and we can actually pay back if it needs to be. Um, but yeah, occasionally, and uh, I mean, mostly people trust us because they know us and they know that we would never, um, we would never cheat anybody. Uh, particularly even in, like, in the industry, we try as much as possible because Afrobeat promoters had a bad rep but when we started. So we tried, we wanted to be different. Mm. We decided we're going to pay everybody, we're not going to cheat anybody. And um, we have this thing about, um, <clears throat> about good energy that we both of us always talk about. We don't love one to take advantage of anybody because we believe that it will come back to us. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it, it's, um, but yeah, people know that we, we, we're good for, we're good for it. It's a good philosophy. Yeah. It's a winning one. Yeah, no absolutely, matter what. absolutely. No matter what. So let's, let's go right back to the, the this? background here. Let's go right back to, to your, your background from when you, you guys, you guys migrate here? Yep. Yeah. How long ago was that? For me, it was um, exactly 10 years ago. I came in August 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I came on a, cause I, my, I, I came on a marriage visa because my wife's been here since 2003. She came here to study and then. Uh, she's Nigerian said, also? Yeah, she's Nigerian. Yeah. And stayed back and then, uh, yeah. So I came here on a, on a marriage visa and he's been here for 17 years. I came in 2005, November. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Interesting. The first time he came to Perth, I took him out clubbing. Yep. Was it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me the story. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I I know. Where did you go first? Where did we go? Ah, Yoruba. Yoruba. Oh. Yoruba. 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 In Northbridge. Because <laughs> that was the only club. Yeah. That, that played, played Yeah. And Afrobeat and a bit of Afrobeat. Yeah. yeah. So took him to Yoruba. Yeah. Yoruba. It's Yoruba. so funny that we've kind of circled back. Into, yeah, it's into it's that. crazy, man. Have you like, done an event there? No, it's no, gone. It's, it's closed gone. down. Oh. Like a long time ago. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Shows how much I yeah. go out. Yeah. I remember closed Yoruba. Down, yeah, closed down a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So where's, uh, so Metro, there's Metro City. What mm. other clubs am I expecting Afrobeats going, going out tonight or Saturday night? Mm. Where am I guaranteed Afrobeats? Or decent music. <laughs> In general, uh, with, with, with Afrobeat, it's always um, a lot of the Afrobeat um, uh, clubbing nights are usually pop ups. Uh, so, we in our, in our own case, we don't run club nights per se, we only just run like um, one off events here and there. So, but if you really want to go out on a Friday night or Saturday night, uh, look out for a library, uh, they have a, an Afrobeat event there at the library. Uh, I think the Republic has got one as well, and then. Um, Sometimes Kahuna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, um, Gold by Subiaco. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they have one. And then we, I think the best thing is just to follow some of these promoters yeah. on social media, uh, on Instagram, because they all have, every week there's something happening, yeah. happening with Afrobeat and then you just go to that venue. Mm. Nice, mm. nice. 
So after you've uh, after you've been to the first first uh, night out at the Eurobar mm. and you've settled into Australian way of life, yeah. how has that been for you over the last ten over over ten years? How are you are you enjoying it? You're obviously making something of yourselves. Mm. What's it like compared to back home? Look, <clears throat> it's different. It's Very different. different. It's completely different. Right. Uh, there are things I like about Australia. There are some things I don't like about it. There are things I like about Nigeria. There are some things I don't like about it. So it's, mm. it's yeah, it depends on, I guess, um, I think we just kind of focus on the good parts of both. Yeah. Uh, places. Um, I, in saying that, though, I am grateful. I think running something like this, it's. Uh, I feel, and this is completely my opinion. I feel like it's a little bit um, more straightforward. Yeah. In Australia, I agree with that. Than it will be back home. Mm, I agree with that. Yeah. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. Because uh, back home, um, the system there is not as organized as mm-hmm. it is here. So there's a lot of cutting of corners. There's um, it's just it's just really stressful to be honest with you. <laughs> Very stressful because um, I did like what we are doing right now. I did it back in uni, so that, I think that's where most of my experience came from. Um, yeah, back in uni, I used to run club nights with my friends, uh, bring artists, do shows, run events, run award shows, and all of that. And this is way back even before. Uh, social media before online ticketing and all of that. So it used to be all tickets at the door. Our marketing was face to face. We pamphlets and stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We run run like big rallies with cars and distribute pamphlets and all of that. That's what we used to do back then. And like there was no system at all. It was just everything was just off the cuff. Mm. And, yeah. then, and then on the night you are so tensed because you really don't have anything to measure if people actually receive the message. So you are so tense that, oh my God, I hope people actually really turn up. <laughs> or like now, I mean, everything is online. You can see your ticketing, the way it's doing, you know who's, how many people are turning up. So hmm. like you don't have that that tension there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I've always like, I've always wanted to, to do like, some, like something from every single industry and yeah. like promoting an event like that would be yeah. so fun. Yeah. Um, but that stress of going, oh, how many tickets? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. like I've, I've hosted an event of 120 people and it was yeah. just walking around the city taking photos. Yeah. And I started three months prior to that, I was doing it just one person mm. a night. So, hey, mm. on Instagram stories, hey, mm. anybody want to come out and take mm. photos? Yeah. Within two weeks, I had a every every night booked out. Yeah. And then my wife said, what about me? Would it, you know, <laughs> can we have a night together? <laughs> and then I was like, you know what, I should do some just group sessions, yeah. you know, and then it evolved into like the three-month big thing. Um, but I cannot imagine like doing that in a club. I've, I've got friends in the industry yeah. doing it, mm. like um, – um, Furman, yeah, yeah. Furman, he's got the uh, the humble club, humble. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's killing it with that. It's dope. Um, and then there's a few others. Um, I've got I've got some friends in Capital Corp. Okay, yeah, they're yeah. killing it there. You know, but uh, what what do you think br- apart from the music? What do you think brings people to the venue? Hmm. Um, I think. For me, I think also the 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 trust people have in the brand, mm. yeah, uh, and then your marketing. It's it's basically your marketing because we've seen situations where, like, the artist, like for us with the shows, it's not enough for you to announce an artist and expect people to turn up. Yeah. There's so much that you still have to do, um, reaching out to influencers, doing your social media ads. We still do face-to-face. We still print cards and flyers. Mm -hmm. Um, Like just every opportunity you get, just telling people about your show. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a major, it's a major, major influence for us. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. Mm. We also focus on the customer experience. So Mm. they're saying that they, people who come to our event, we want them to have an experience. There's yeah. some events you go to and you, when you leave, you're like, oh my God, that was amazing. There was something, it, 
happened wasn't even the artist, mm. but there was something that gave you a good experience. Yeah. Mm. So that's one thing also we focus on, uh, and we always try to look for ways to improve it and make sure that if you come to everyone who comes for any of our events mm. has a an experience. Mm. There. And that's one thing we are constantly working on. So if you have any good ideas, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's so many things I can take from different cultures. Um, when we were in Thailand back in 2017, it was a football trip Yeah, with the boys. Yeah. Mm. And there was a bar we would go to. Um, it was called the Roo Bar. Okay. And we would go there every night at the start. We'd have dinner and then we'd go to the Roo Bar to start, you know, pre-drinks. Yeah. And then we would see where the night takes us. We would go to the, the, the bigger club. I think it was called Illusions or something. And it was a vibe there. They had platforms and stuff and everyone was vibing. There was always a specific time in the night where it just became real seedy. But me and, uh, me and some mates, we would just like muck around, go, go out on the street because it was vibing all night, mm. you know, until about 3 o'clock. And then as you're walking down the, the road back to the hotel, you just get cut off by uh, the women of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, they're trying to hustle as well. Yeah. But, like, I remember me because I stand out like a sore thumb being yeah, 6'10". They're just they're like, like oh. <laughs> They would, like, grab onto me, like, just, just go, okay, we go. And I'm like, like where are we going? Like, no, like, what's no, going no, on? No. Where are we going? Are we, <laughs> a bit of a culture shock for you. Get some pad thai or something. <laughs> you know, here you just, you just get more. <laughs> Yeah, you're hoping not to get king hit, you know? Yeah. Oh, but um, – and where I'm from, I'm from Kyrgyzstan, former Soviet Kyrgyzstan. Union. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. Former Soviet Union. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if there's any clubs at all. Mm. It's all it's all real religious. 90, yeah. uh, 80% yeah. of it's a Muslim. Yeah, Muslim, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, everyone's just doing their thing. Actually, what I like about my country, the culture, is the food. The food, that's my favourite thing. That's – that always gets me to the place, you know. Oh. Everyone's having a good time talking about the food, you know, couple of couple of vodkas. Yeah. And, oh, definitely, you know, yeah. You know? But um, my experience in Vegas, we yeah. another footy trip in Vegas. Yeah. This was like 11 years ago. We would go to the VIP section. They'd have like VIP like booths and stuff mm. and they'd, there would be bottle service yeah. and they'd give you a whole Grey Goose yeah, bottle. Yeah, Grey Goose, Big yeah, bottle and bottle just like, like okay. far out. That was an experience. Yeah. That's that's what gets people yeah. kind of interested. Yeah. See, notice you remember that. That, yeah. that exclusivity. Yeah. But that's a, like coming here and going back to my original question, mm. what are you finding different between Nigeria and Australia? Mm. I figure I find that bringing different cultures and mixing them together, bringing, you know how you say you, you, you like the good things and the bad things mm. from each culture? Mm. Being multicultural I think is the one of the biggest advantages. It's a big advantage. Because you can take the best of all worlds, oh, yep. bring them together, and yep. it's like a hybrid sort of yes. thing. And people go, oh. And, you know, Afro beats fusion. Yep. You, you fuse you two fuse different – yeah. it's yeah. a vibe. Yeah. So you've got to do the same thing with the vibe within the club. Yes. The music brings them in, gets yeah. them interested, gets them hyped because it's a very trending genre and yeah. hopefully for, for decades to come. Mm. But uh, – what else, you know? Mm. So from Vegas, I'd be like, okay, VIP boots, mm. roped off, mm. grey goose or whatever. Mm. It's not that Smirnoff shit. Mm. And, you know, something something cool that gives them a little bit of like a, a status. Yeah, a bit you know? of vanity, yeah. A bit of vanity. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Yeah, there's it, every uh, every 20-year-old white girl in, in, uh, in the country wants to be with the DJ booth yeah. going, yep. you yeah. know, like. Uh, it's so you know, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> but what else is there? Like um, in Thailand, it was it was the buckets. Yeah. It was the bucket. I mean, there's obviously alcohol licensing. Yeah. And you yeah. can't do specific shit. Yeah. Uh, but there was one club I remember. I forget the name. Uh, for three hours from nine to oh, twelve, mm. um, you would get like half price drinks for three hours. Mm. Wow. And it, and it got everybody in there. And I remember 2015 when we went there, that was – we always went there because mm. it was just, just cheap, good mm. alcohol. Yeah. We'd get Jack Daniels and Coke for like $2, $3. Wow. <laughs> and okay. it, was, it was legit. Yeah, like, it yeah. was legit. It wasn't yeah. like just fake stuff. And I remember two years later we went there. We were like so excited. 
we got in there and we paid because you had to pay at the door for, yeah. for that. For that, you get a wristband to yeah, get the half yeah, price drinks, yeah. and then you drink enough to warrant the cost yeah. of the door yeah. price. Yeah, we went up there. The whole team, <laughs> there's no one up there. Ch- like it changes qu- so quickly within yeah. two years. So that's the other thing. It's like you're doing so well now, but you have to keep ahead of the curve. Yes, you have to keep paying attention. Yeah, because um, one thing we we also try to focus on a lot is that the repeat customer experience because mm. see how you went back to that place yeah was because of the first experience you yeah. had mm. so we we make sure that when you come to our events you want to come to the next one because we 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 always try to try to recreate things and reinvent things and just make you feel like you're getting value for your money yeah yeah, so I'm um, talking about, you know how you talked about the VIP boots and stuff? We do that at our events as well. Mm. So we actually have two types of VIPs. Yeah. We've got the VVIP and the VIP boots. So the VVIP, they, we put them upstairs. They've got uh, their own, no, they've got their own the, uh, the access to the toilets at that level. No one else uses it apart from them. Um, this champagne on arrival, uh, red carpet entry, yeah. and then we Can get I a pace. kind of paste made by a chef, made by a chef mm. as well. I'll promote that. Just get yeah. me up there, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and then and then we put them in a place where like the it's it's elevated and the, you, you you can just see everything on stage. Yeah, you feel so, like the queen. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the king. The king. Yeah, it's and they a king. They have hostesses. Yeah, you've got uh, hostesses so, for that. And they have wow. So if, if you have a party, you can ask. You can call someone, ask them. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah, it's a full experience. That's yeah. so cool. So, and that's at that's at Metro. Yeah, yeah. Metro. City. Yeah, and that works there too because it's all yeah. leveled. Yeah. yeah, it's all leveled. And then with the with the VIP boots downstairs as well, it comes with a drink package. So when when you when you get it, you're getting a drink package with it as well. So which comes with the hostess and then yeah, yeah, that's so good. With that, Metro City is. I mean, back in my day. <laughs> early 20s it was the place to go and now I go past and it's still the place to go yeah mm. different genres different demographics you know it, it has changed over time mm. uh, obviously depending on the event yep um, my favorite thing was outside when there was like a big night when there was a big performer coming in yeah and and the lines were huge oh. the crowds walking up there's yep. always a couple of buskers yep who were playing like something cool? Yeah, like- and they would clean up with money. <laughs> and now I'm like, man, it, it's harder because no one has cash anymore. Yeah, so it yeah. sucks. And I'm just like, uh, iPhones releasing the the tap. You can pay each other by tapping yeah, each other's yeah, phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I could just see them just going like, like having their phone, phone and yeah. just tapping yeah, the just phone. Tapping, yeah. tips. <laughs> they have to pay tax on that now, though. I know. Um, but yeah, go, going to that—that that was a vibe. And the the tiered exclusivity things. Um, I always love being at the very front of the crowd. Yeah, we're the funniest. Oh, we're the funniest, <laughs> you know. But it was always good to know someone that you you know you know you knew a bartender mm. or or the owner or yeah, something, and you, you can kind of discount on drinks. Have that, yeah, yeah drinks. you know. Um, but. Everybody else having a good time. Obviously, the safety. What what is it like there during that time? Is there much like drama with, within the patrons? To be honest, we actually envisage that a lot. So we try to control it even before before it starts. Um, at our events, we always have more securities than people. Jesus. Yeah, like it's crazy. We 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 have a security company that we work with. So outside the security that Metro City provides, we provide our own security as well. Yeah. Just as an extra cost. Extra. So like our securities are always double the amount of people. So let's say we have an event where we need to have um where the standard is 12 securities, we'll have 20 securities. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you have a thousand people, you have two thousand securities. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, no. I wish. I wish you was like that. Yeah. And then security yeah. stuff. <laughs> so yeah, they will have security in the crowd. So like we nip everything in the board before it actually yeah. becomes something. Yeah. And then we notify the police about our event as well. So oh, there's yeah. usually police outside. It's like a hot spot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. once before you start anything you get I just I just get a sense of safety just yeah, knowing that yeah yeah. because like so. I mean I don't get any dramas mm. I'm, I'm probably 
harder to pick on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like why? It's you pretty know? obvious. <laughs> but you get those hot heads that come in and just want to cause trouble, and yeah. just you can pick them off really easily. Yeah, easily. Like, I mean, for me, for me, I'm 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 extra as it is. Mm. Alcohol, like I don't get blind drunk and get angry and all yeah. that stuff. I just get extra, extra. <laughs> So, but when, when people see that sometimes, like on my Bucks party, I remember they dressed me up as Big Bird. Yeah. <laughs> and we went play golf, you know, um, Holy Moly. Yeah, Holy Moly. Yeah. And they had those big beers. Yeah. And I was drinking mine. I won golf, by the way. And I was well on my way <laughs> on my Bucks night. And I was just, I was just vibing. And they cut me off. They cut me off the drinks. They're like, Sev, you're cut off. It's over. This is your last drink. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm having a good time, you know? <laughs> and they're like, you're just, you're just a bit loud. I'm like, I am loud. That's me. What are you talking about? Do you want me to come in guns blazing? You probably think I'm drunk. You won't let me in the first place. <laughs> just crap. But yeah. Okay. Dream venue to host at. Let's start in Perth. Metro City. Or is there a, I mean, I don't want you to, you know, talk shit about Metro uh, no, City. No, no, we're not talking uh, shit. Like it's a, see, the, the venue thing comes with um, the amount of crowd we're yeah. expecting. Yeah. yeah. For the shows we're doing right now, I think Metro City is the perfect place for us. Like it's a concert club. They have all the production requirement needed for a good show that's not so big. Uh, but we'll eventually get to a stage where we will be needing places like the RAC Arena, which is very soon, to be honest with you. Hey. Um, the RAC Arena, the um, HBF Stadium. Yeah. The, um, yeah. HBF Stadium and all of that. So, um, yeah, it just depends on the, the crowd we're expecting, yeah, to be the honest with you. Drive, the crowd drives. Yeah, yeah we the use. venue we use. Moment, Arena. Metro is perfect. Yeah. yeah. How so, close are you for RAC Arena? Very close. Very close. Is this the March announcement? <laughs> oh, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Exclusive Sebo show. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so RAC Arena. Dream, dream performer. Yeah, all we've, time. We've had a meeting with them already. We like your dream ready. performer. A oh, dream performer. performer. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Oh man, for oh, me it's Burner Boy. Oh, it's Burner. It's, it's Burner Boy. Like, like people just for you. Like, it's, like, it's, for, yeah, it's Burner. Like to have a Burner Boy concert in Perth. That's uh, it's the dream right now. Burner Boy. Yeah. yeah, I've not heard of this. Yeah. So he's um he's a uh, he won the Grammy two years ago. Yeah. So he's um he's actually I'll call, I'll I would say he's the he's probably one of the biggest exports out of Africa in terms of Afrobeats. Yeah. Uh, he's Damn, done, I need to get cultured hard. Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> actually I'll send his um I'll send a link to his new, latest album. He's actually in Sydney next. Yeah. Um, he's headlining Promised Land. Oi. In in October, Oi. yeah. So he's in Sydney thirtieth as well. Mm-hmm. His uh, Live Nation is bringing him. So he's done collaborations with Ed Sheeran, Joe yeah. Balvin, Khalid. Good fusions. Uh, yeah, oh, Khalid. Yeah, oh, yeah. he came to Origin a few years ago yeah. before COVID twenty nineteen. Yeah. Mm. I love Khalid. Pop can. So yeah, I'll send a link to you after yeah. you listen. It's a very good album. Yeah, wow, and, yeah. and they're all on that album. Yeah. Whew. So this the 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 song that is believed to be the song of the summer right now in the US, last last. Um, is his song. He did a cover on Tony Braxton's uh, Not Man Enough. Was it Man Enough? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, I it, probably heard it. it. Yeah, it's yeah. so catchy. You, you, you probably would have heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I probably yeah. definitely would have I heard it. I sent it to someone and they're like, oh, yeah. so he signed to someone. Yeah, like, yeah. Shy, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's it. Oh, <laughs> shit. There it and is. The and shy, yo. Yeah, oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I, I just listen to music now. I don't, I don't go, oh, who's that? Yeah. I just, I just listen. Like my world is full of podcasts and audiobooks. I'm not really as into it as, as I used to be. Mm. Like I only learned what drill music was the other day. Yeah. And I'm just like, the fuck? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like when Trap came out. I'm like, what? Whatever the kids are into, yeah, you know? know. Whatever the kids are into. The, you got the Eshays and the Roadman yeah, and the, the Youngins. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, in terms of like the crowd, the demographics of the crowd, are you finding you're bringing more of uh, the the majority of the African community in, or are you finding that some of the Australians are also getting into it? Um, I think some Australians are getting into it. We, of course, at the moment, still have a huge African yeah. community, and we love it. Yeah. To that. Um, we're also looking at ways, because, again, we're trying to um, present Afrobeat mm. 
not just to Africans, to everybody. Yeah. So we're also looking for ways to get a lot more people into it. Um, but yeah, look, we love we love the guys that come around. We love the guys that support us. They we literally nothing <laughs> without those people. So, yeah. Yeah. We're also looking to expand and see if we can get a few more people to come in. But at the moment, majority a lot of um, a huge percentage of our crowd yeah. are Africans and South Americans actually. Oh. Mm. Yeah. The Colombians and yeah, the Brazilians. The Latinas, yeah. Yeah, Latinas. Yeah. They're good at twerking, so they're good. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and of course, you know, they, they, their rhythm is, is, is kind of close to, similar, similar to Afrobeat. So yeah. it doesn't oh, take yeah. them, it's so easy for them to dance to Afrobeat because they are already they already know how to yeah. dance to rhythm and all of that. So, yeah. Get that rhythm. Yeah. So now your dream venue in the world, where would you like to play? Do you see yourselves in Vegas promoting? We've not thought about that that far yet. <laughs> you got to manifest we, it. Yeah, we'll come we, back in twelve months and say, yeah, "See, yeah. how easy is that?" <laughs> um, I think uh, for now, the, the dream basically for now is to is to host uh, a festival uh, for Asia Pacific. Yeah, in Bali. In Bali. So an Afro wow. Afro beats festival. Oh, yeah, that so, would go off. So Combinations cheap. Yeah. Lights are cheap. Yeah. So I hope. <laughs> so we very soon we hope we get there. Like that's that's the dream. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. And uh is there anything else in the pipelines? So uh, you've got your detailing business, you've got your IT business. Anything else in mind? Any any other shiny objects in on the horizon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think anything else would be too much at the moment. I think for now for a bit, there's a lot, there's actually a lot that we're still Planning on planning, planning to do. Mm. I think we drew a plan on, on a piece of on a tissue paper on mm. a kebab store at two a.m. It was actually at around um, midnight. Yeah. We we went for an event and we found out that we we got there and we were too early. Yeah. And then we just went to a kebab shop and then bought kebab and then yeah, I had I, we got a pen from them and then just drew like a plan on a yeah. on a tissue paper and we've the only, kebab tissue paper. We've only done like. About twenty percent of what we of what we wrote down. So there's there's still there's a lot. So much there's so much more to do. Do you still have the tissue paper? Oh, yeah. yeah, I have. have we have a photo of it. Yeah. Like, you gotta frame right. it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like iconic <laughs> shit. I know. So like, yeah, that. there's so much to do. So much. So many. So much more to do. I love yeah. it. Mm. I love it. All right. So finally, in summary, where do we find you? And how do we get along, get amongst it? So we've got our socials, Afrobeats, just, it's just Afrobeat Fusion. Yeah. We're lucky to be like, we were the first to get that name. So there's no dot, there's no hyphen. It's just Afrobeat Fusion on Instagram, on Facebook. And then you can find us at afrobeatfusion.com online. So it's not .com.au, just afrobeatfusion.com. Because you're going worldwide. Yeah, yeah we're going worldwide. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. And if you had one piece of advice for anyone about anything, what would it be? Your personal just life message for me yeah just, just do it just do it yeah yeah uh for me is patience patience be patient but just do it though yeah yeah just do it yeah do it uh, but be very but patient, be, be for patient the when you yeah. Do it. yeah 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 be patient for the result because um we're in an era where you s it's very easy to see other people's glory and that sort of blinds people from how much work people are actually putting into their stuff. Like it's easy to see, like to see the shiny object right now on Instagram and stuff, but the work that goes behind the scenes, no one sees. Mm. So that tricks people into thinking it's actually easy. very easy to mm. get there. But yeah. it takes a lot of patience and hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I love that. Thanks for joining. Thanks Thank for the chat. Much. Thanks for having us, man. I've learned a lot. Really good. And I uh, hope everybody at home listening in the car, in the shower, on the toilet, <laughs> in the club. <laughs> um, get around Afrobeats. I'm really inspired and I'm, I'm keen to come in and check it out. Metro City, RAC Arena, some club in Vegas, somewhere in Thailand, a nice big-ass resort in Bali. I'm keen to, to follow the journey along. Absolutely. We'll send you tickets for the 27th yeah. event, the, the Kiss Daniel event. It's actually the biggest artist um, 
um for, uh, so far this year that we're going to bring excellent yeah so Ooh. like yeah his um his production is going to be ridiculous vvip right yeah vvip definitely <laughs> definitely I mean, man I mean. <laughs> definitely vvip what a flex yeah <laughs> So yeah, man, we'll get you in there so you have a feel of what it feels, what, yeah. what it's like. Yeah. Oh, hit them up and uh, join them. And uh, when you see them, say hello. They're probably putting out fires though, so uh, <laughs> just a fist bump and away you go. <laughs> All right. Good thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah.